Welcome. If you are watching this presentation, you have been identified by Roger Williams University as a campus security authority. My name is Pam Moffitt Limoges, and I am the Cleary Compliance Coordinator for the university. During this presentation, we will be discussing the following. In section one, we're going to be speaking about the history and overview of the Gene Cleary Security on Campus Act, also known as the Cleary Act. Section two, we'll be speaking about the Campus Security Authority's definition, roles, and types. In section three, we'll be speaking about collecting, classifying, and reporting crime data. Section number four, where Title IX and the Cleary Act overlap. And section number five, university resources. The learning goal for this presentation is for you as an identified campus security authority, otherwise known as a CSA, to have a clear understanding of the basic reporting requirements under the Cleary Act, including how to report reportable crimes to the Roger Williams University Compliance Coordinator. Section number one, history and overview of the Gene Cleary Security on Campus Act, also known as the Cleary Act. The Cleary Act is named after Jean Cleary, a 19-year-old Lehigh University student who was raped and murdered in her residence hall dorm room by a fellow student in 1986. Mr. and Mrs. Cleary were very upset that the university had not provided its students or staff with the knowledge that 38 violent crimes had been recorded in the university geography. Her parents argued that if the university had provided their family with this information, they may have chosen to go to another university. As a result, Security on Campus, a nonprofit organization which reports crime on campuses across the country, was founded. The Cleary Act requires institutions of higher education receiving federal financial aid to report specific crime statistics on campus and provide safety and crime information to members of the campus community. The law is tied to federal student financial aid programs and requires colleges and universities to make timely warnings, emergency notifications, and provide annual information about crime statistics and security policies on campus. Violators can be fined up to $35,000 per incident by the U.S. Department of Education, the agency charged with enforcing the act. To ensure that students know about the dangers on their campuses, the Cleary Act requires institutions to gather and publish identified crime data from campus security authorities. Many crimes, especially sexual assaults, are not reported to police for a myriad of reasons. The Cleary Act requires that the university gather and publish crime data from multiple sources, including a campus security authority, to ensure that students and others know about potential dangers on its campus. Crime statistics are also polled from local and state police authorities around the geographical area of the campus and are included in the crime data that is annually published. Requirements of the Cleary Act are to disclose, collect, classify, and count crime reports and statistics. We also issue crime alerts, timely warnings for any Cleary Act specified crime that represents an ongoing threat to the safety of students or employees. We also issue emergency notifications upon confirmation of significant emergency or dangerous situations involving immediate threat to health or safety. We annually publish annual security report. We submit crime statistics to the Department of Education, maintain a publicly available daily crime log. We implement missing student notification procedures. We also maintain fire safety information, including fire log, annual fire report with statistics and policy statements. All of this information is gathered during the course of the year and is compiled into an annual security report that is due on our website and needs to be disseminated to all current and prospective students along with staff and faculty on our campus by October 1st each year. Further requirements of the Cleary Act are that institutions report annually and ongoing where crimes occurred and the type of crimes that are reported. These are two very important identifying factors as to Cleary classification. Employees and students are notified by October 1st of each year that the campus annual security report is updated and available online and in hard copy at the public safety headquarters. Cleary Act history and overview 
1988 in Pennsylvania, the Crime Awareness and Campus Safety Act became law. In 1990, that state law became federal law, and it amended to include the Higher Education Act of 1965. In 1998, the Crime Awareness and Campus Security Act was renamed to be the Gene Cleary Disclosure of Campus Security Policy and Campus Crime Statistics Act, also known as the Cleary Act. In 2000 and 2008, the Gene Cleary Act was amended as part of the Higher Education Opportunity Act, the HEOA. In 2013, it was amended as part of the Violence Against Women Reauthorization Act. Section number two, Campus Security Authorities, CSAs, Definition, Types, and Role. What is a Campus Security Authority? The Cleary Act requires that universities gather and publish crime data from multiple sources, including a campus security authority. The law defines four categories of a campus security authority. One would be university police. Two would be non-police security staff responsible for monitoring university property. Three, people or offices designated under our policy as those to whom crimes should be reported, and officials with significant responsibility for student and campus activities. CSAs do not go by job title. They go by job description. Anyone that advises students would be considered a CSA at Roger Williams University. Campus security authorities are individuals or organizations associated with our institution who are responsible for reporting crimes under the Cleary Act. CSAs are defined by job function and not by title. A CSA is anyone who has significant responsibility for student and campus activities. The law defines significant responsibility broadly and includes but is not limited to student housing, student discipline, and campus judicial proceedings. Examples of individuals who are not considered campus security authorities under the Cleary Act a faculty member who does not have any responsibility for student and campus activities beyond the classroom, clerical or cafeteria staff, licensed mental health counselors or pastoral counselors if they are working within the scope of their license or religious assignment, and also health services licensed practical nurses. And just keep in mind that this is not an exhaustive list. A special note to licensed mental health counselors, even though as a counselor, under certain conditions, you do not have to report, you can tell the person how he or she can report the crime to the police or to the Department of Public Safety, and also to provide them with on and off campus resources. Roger Williams University encourages reports of crimes by counselors and victims. A special note to counselors, even though, as a counselor, under certain conditions, you do not have to report, you can tell the person how he or she can report the crime to the police and provide them with resources. Roger Williams University encourages reports of crimes by counselors and victims to the Cleary Compliance Coordinator, even if the victim's name is left as anonymous. As a CSA, your responsibilities are report Cleary crimes occurring on our Cleary geography to your Cleary Coordinator, provide crime victims with resources available to them. Take CSA training annually. If you see an emergency happening, we encourage you to call 911. Section number three, reporting as a CSA. There are certain crimes that should be reported under the Cleary Act, and some of those criminal offenses include homicide, sexual assault, robbery, aggravated assault, burglary, motor vehicle theft, arson, dating violence, domestic violence, and stalking. We also include forms of hate crime. Any of the above, plus larceny, theft, simple assault, intimidation, or destruction, damage, vandalism of property, if motivated by hate or bias. We have to report any arrests or referrals for disciplinary action, weapons, drug law violations, and liquor law violations. Hate crimes bias categories would be race, gender, gender identity, gender expression, religion, ethnicity, disability, sexual orientation, and natural origin. And these hate crime bias categories are also whether they're actual or perceived bias categories. CSAs must also report arrests and referrals for disciplinary actions, carrying possessing weapons, illegal drug abuse, 
liquor law violations. We do not report violations of university policy as a Cleary crime. We report crimes within your Cleary geography. A Cleary geography for Roger Williams University on campus building or property would be the residence halls, academic buildings, anything that's within the core campus. Non-campus buildings would be anything outside of the core campus and outside of the geography. Public property would be city streets or parking lots, roadways, anything that is adjacent to core campus and the core geography, that would be considered a public property. And this map depicts a picture of what would include on-campus buildings, on-campus residential housing, public property, and off-campus property owned or controlled by the university. What information should I provide to the victim? Encourage them to seek medical help immediately. Also, if a sexual assault, domestic violence, dating violence, or stalking report is received from a CSA, they are required by Title IX and the Violence Against Women Act to provide the following. Victims with written resources, guidance on how to preserve evidence. Also, you should give him or her a copy of the victim's rights pamphlet and also inform the Title IX coordinator or his or her designee about the report. You should provide the following information to a victim. Encourage them to seek medical help immediately if needed. Sexual assault, domestic violence, dating violence, or stalking. Campus security authorities are required by Title IX and the Violence Against Women Act to provide victims with written resources, guidance on how to preserve evidence, and give them a copy of the victim's rights flyer. The CSA also needs to inform the victim that they are required by federal law to inform the Title IX coordinator about the report. Information that you need for reporting. Ask for important details. Where did it happen? What happened? When did it happen? If not sure how to classify the crime, pick the best suited crime classification and provide details in the comment section on the CSA form. Refer the student to the RWU Counseling Center or other on-campus resources. All of this information should be sent to the Cleary Compliance Coordinator for the annual statistics. You should always offer the reportee resources for on and off campus regardless of when and where the crime took place. Do not report crimes to the Cleary coordinator if a person tells you about a crime that occurred before he or she enrolled in Roger Williams University or while he or she was away from campus and not involved in a Roger Williams University activity. Although somebody informs you that they were the victim of a crime during one of these two categories, you should still refer them to counseling or recommend medical needs if necessary. What not to do. Do not try to determine whether a crime took place or who was at fault. That is the function of law enforcement or the Department of Public Safety. Do not try to apprehend the alleged perpetrator of the crime. That is the function of law enforcement or the Department of Public Safety. Do not try to convince a victim to contact law enforcement if the victim chooses not to do so. Do not identify the victim unless the victim consents to being identified. What does the Cleary coordinator do with campus security authority reports? She determines whether or not the crime or incident is reportable under Cleary. If reportable, the crime or incident is included as a de-identified statistics in our annual security and fire safety report published every October 1st and available on the Roger Williams University public safety website. Examples of collecting crime information. Scenario number one, a resident assistant who has been identified as a CSA is told by a fellow student that she has been raped and is seeking emotional and medical support. The resident assistant should document this information as a crime report. It should be reported regardless of whether the victim chooses to file a report with law enforcement or press charges. Example of collecting crime information continued scenario number two. A student mentions to her boyfriend that a number of rooms on her dorm floor were broken into during the previous night's football game. Later that day, her boyfriend tells the athletic director what he heard the AD asks which dorm it was and what, if anything, else. The boyfriend knows about the situation. The AD should document the information and forward it to the school's campus security department per the school's crime reporting policy. Example of collecting crime information continued scenario three. Ms. Jones, director of student housing at your school, gets a call from the director of a counseling center in town. The caller wants to let the director know that four students from the school sought assistance at the center and told the center's counselor counselors that they had been sexually assaulted on campus and were seeking emotional support. They did not want police investigations. These are third-party reports and Ms. Jones, having no reason
reason to believe that they were not made in good faith should document all of the information she was given and forward the reports to the person or office responsible for collecting Cleary crime reports at her institution, along with sending a copy of this information to the Title IX coordinator. Section number four, intersection of the Cleary Act and Title IX. Title IX promotes equal opportunity by providing that no person may be subjected to discrimination on the basis of sex under any educational program or activity receiving federal financial assistance. A school must respond promptly and effectively to sexual harassment, including sexual violence that creates a hostile environment. When responsible employees know or should know about possible sexual harassment or sexual violence, they must report it to the Title IX coordinator or other school designee. The Cleary Act promotes campus safety by ensuring that students, employees, parents, and the broader community are well informed about important public safety and crime prevention matters. Institutions that receive Title IV funds must disclose accurate and complete crime statistics for incidents that are reported to campus security authorities, CSAs, and local law enforcement as having occurred on or near the campus. Schools must also disclose campus safety policies and procedures that specifically address topics such as sexual assault prevention, drug and alcohol abuse prevention, and emergency response and evacuation. The Cleary Act also promotes transparency and ongoing communication about campus crimes and other threats to health and safety and empowers members to take a more active role in their own safety and security. The Violence Against Women Reauthorization Act of 2013, also known as VAWA, has amended the Cleary Act to include disclosures of statistics regarding incidents of dating violence, domestic violence, and stalking. As such, the university must disclose policies and procedures relating to sexual assault protocol, investigations, prompt corrective action, change of academic or living situation, the accused and accuser notified of outcome at the same time and manner, and Title IX specifies both parties be notified in writing, disclose sanctions imposed. Title IX requires interim protective measures while investigation is taking place. Prior to 2013, the Cleary Act did not collect data regarding domestic violence, dating violence, or stalking. The VAWA Act has incorporated that into its act and now is recorded in the annual security report. What is a responsible employee? A responsible employee is a university employee who has the authority to address sexual misconduct, who has the duty to report incidents of sexual misconduct or other student misconduct, or who a student could reasonably believe has this authority or duty. When a victim tells a responsible employee about an incident of sexual violence, the victim has the right to expect the university to take immediate and appropriate steps to investigate what happened and to resolve the matter promptly and equitably. A responsible employee must report to the Title IX coordinator or other deputies all relevant details about the alleged sexual misconduct shared by the victim and that the university will need to determine what happened, including the names of the victim and alleged perpetrator or perpetrators, any witnesses and any other relevant facts, including the date, time, and specific location of the alleged incident. Also, to the extent possible, information reported to a responsible employee will be shared only with people responsible for handling the university's response to the report. A responsible employee should not share information with law enforcement without the victim's consent or unless the victim has also reported the incident to law enforcement. The Associate Vice President of Student Life, Kathleen McMahon, serves as the university's Title IX coordinator. Anyone who reports sexual misconduct will be offered support from a variety of services, including the Sexual Assault Advisor Support Program, also known as SAASP, by Associate Vice President McMahon. The Roger Williams University Sexual Assault Support Services Program will provide an advisor who will assist with promoting the empowerment of survivors by providing advocacy, information, resources, and support with the university disciplinary process or with the legal system. Mandatory reporters under Title IX Responsible employees defined as employees who supervise other employees 
For example, deans, directors, department chairs, coordinators, unit heads, managers, and principal investigators. All faculty, coaches, and trainers. Subcategories would be resident assistants, academic advisors, student activity coordinators, and graduate assistants. Who can you talk to? You can speak to anyone that you feel comfortable talking to. However, you may speak with our counseling staff in the Counseling Center confidentially or the Rogers University Multi-Faith Chaplain. They will not share what you tell them unless you want them to. Mandatory reporters, all other Rogers University employees, including faculty, residents, assistants, and other student employees and trustees are all considered mandatory reporters and must report information about sexual misconduct to the Title IX coordinator or designate. Filing a Title IX complaint. You may tell victims the following. Share as much information as he or she feels comfortable providing. They may request that his or her name and other identifiable information not be disclosed to the alleged perpetrator. However, inform the victim that providing more information will assist the university with conducting an investigation and asking the university to not disclose your name will limit the ability of the university to respond. Even if he he or she asks the university not to take action, the university may still be required to take steps to protect the overall campus environment. In such an event, the university will do its best to protect your identity. Who can you talk to? She or he can speak to anyone that they feel comfortable talking to. However, if they would like to be confidential, they may speak with the counseling staff in the counseling center confidentially, the health services licensed practical nurse services, or the Roger Williams University multi-faith chaplain. They will not share what you tell them unless you want them to. Mandatory reporters, all other Roger Williams University employees, including faculty, residence assistants, and trustees are all considered mandatory reporters and must report information about sexual misconduct to the Title IX coordinator or his or her designee. Role of the Title IX coordinator and deputy coordinators continued. They oversee prompt, effective, and equitable intake investigation, processing, issuing of findings of fact, and timely resolutions of all instances of sex, gender, discrimination made known to responsible employees and or reported or filed by students, faculty, employees, third parties, or by members of the broader community. And lastly, this is a list of Roger Williams University contacts and resources that that you would find helpful if you have any questions about the annual security report, your role as a campus security authority, or the role of a Title IX coordinator, or your role as a responsible employee. Please take a moment to look at Rogers University Sexual Misconduct and Relationship Violence Policy.